And so, if you would stand up and stay standing when I call your name, the chair of the call committee, Carolyn Esselgrove, Al Duchendorf, John Folk, Holly Wooden, Marge Ellis, Eric Morris, and Meredith Tenbrink. Thank you. We also have some special guests with us. Now, Pastor Scott will be among us and around us a lot, but I think it's important that we meet others that he brought with him. So, his wife Mary, you can stand Mary, please, his daughter Lydia, and his daughter Adeline. So we are blessed by God once again. We, we decided to move this to four o'clock. Everything dried up, God is good, and we have a good, pleasant afternoon to have an installation service and a celebration of uh, Sunday School here at All Saints. So welcome as we continue with confession and forgiveness. God who pursues us in love, we come now in confession and repentance. You call us to love and serve others, but we cling to self-interest and small-mindedness. We pursue our own way and seek to prosper ourselves. Despite your generosity and comfort, we are too full of complaints toward you and those around us. Despite your compassion and love for us and all people, we are too full of judgment and fear. Though we come seeking forgiveness that others, though we come seeking your forgiveness for all the ways we sin, we hoard the forgiveness that others would ask of us. Forgive us, welcome us, and reconcile us to you and one another, we pray. God's love for us is beyond understanding, and yet God seeks us out, pursues us, and forgives us. Know that you are forgiven and loved by God. Amen.
are blessed today to have we are blessed today to have Pastor Bob Abrams with us. Pastor Abrams is an assistant to the bishop for the Southern Ohio Synod. He's also a member here at All Saints, so it's an extra special visit for us. Our reading today is from Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived. Following the curse of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Isn't this a beautiful afternoon for this? I was at a wedding yesterday and the sun was just pelting down on us outside, so this, this is good. It's also good that we're not sitting in the rain. So I, I congratulated your pastors on their judgment. Uh, as, as Pastor Bonnie said, my name is Pastor Bob Abrams. Uh, I serve as the assistant to the bishop in the Southern Ohio Synod, um, and I get the privilege of working with congregations when they are in transition working with call committees, helping pastors match up. Um, and so it is a delight today to be here with you uh, to celebrate the installation of Pastor Scott. I also bring you greetings from Bishop Dillahunt, who came, sent me with a very important message, and that is, tell him I said hi. So, can I say hi back for, for you? Uh, I will. I cannot think of a weirder time for a pastor to start a call. Am I right? This is a little strange. So we, so we go through the call process, and then COVID hits, and the church doesn't meet. And so this time has been strange, but it's been a time of, of learning. And we're, we're, we're not done yet. We don't know what it's going to look like, even in six months or a year. But we are starting to learn some things about our, our Southern Ohio Synod in particular, but about the church. Let me tell you a couple of things that we have, have found out. One is that during this time of not meeting, six months or so, the giving in most of our churches has not gone down at all. In fact, in many churches, it has gone up. Huh. And I was sitting next to a pastor last night of a different kind of a non-denominational group, and he said they're giving tanked when they stopped meeting. And I, he said, what happened to, to yours? And I said, it's gone up. I was trying to make him jealous, you know, the Lutherans. <laughs> And he said, why is that? And I said, I think, it's I think it's because we have a sense that the ministry has to continue in a real... Now, you tell me if you think I'm wrong, and I mean that. But if, is, isn't it that we value this community of faith? We, we don't want this to go away. In fact, this, this group... And the groups that gather in the 190 congregations of this synod, they, 
they gather, they don't have to get up in the morning on Sunday. They don't have to go. None of you have to be here right now. But yet you have come. For six months, people got up. They got up and, and, and watched church online. And let me tell you something. In a lot of our congregations, attendance has gone up online. People that we do not know are watching our services. People who may not ever darken the door of a church. Maybe they're not comfortable being in a church around church people. Maybe they think we're judgmental. I don't know. But they, they, they have been watching our services and our, and our people who are the uh, technical experts are saying, sometimes these people are from around the world. What does that mean? What does it mean that in many of our churches, uh, uh, giving has stayed the same or gone up? What does it mean that our attendance has gone up in many places online? I think it means the world is hungry. Something is missing in people's hearts. For people of faith, people like us, church is the place where we come to experience the God who fills that void. But for many people, everyday life, jobs, it doesn't do it, and they're looking for more. I'm going to give you one last, one last statistic to think about. Now this, this data is a couple of years old, doesn't take into account COVID, but the best numbers we have indicate that about a third of Americans are, have any church background at all in terms of membership, um, and a far fewer, far fewer will come to church in the course of a year, more like 25% of Americans will go to church in the course of one year. And weekly attendance, people who are regular attenders, it's more like 13%. Think about that. Five out of six people that we know who are driving by right now, who live in our neighborhoods, who go, who work with us, don't go to church. Many of them may have a faith that we don't know about, but I'm telling you, many of them don't. Yet this time of COVID has opened our eyes to some things. It has opened our eyes to the fact, I think, that what we possess, what we possess, which is the love of God through Christ, is the food that people are starving for. Paul tells us in Ephesians that God loved us before we did anything, before we deserved anything, so much that God came in the form of a person and died for us. So you and I don't, do not go to a church or possess a faith that is a faith about how we are better than anyone else or that we deserve to go to heaven. We possess a faith of a God who loves us and chases us down, as our confession said today. People are hungry for it. And I'm telling you, that is the reason that we are here. We are here, Bishop Dillahunt likes to say it this way, we are an outpost, this church is an outpost for the gospel of Jesus. Nothing more, nothing less. It's not a club. We're not paying dues to get a service. We are here because God loves the world and we are here to tell the world that God loves them. And I got news for you. It ain't just people like me dressed like this who are called to do it. Now I'm not, I'm not gonna keep talking a long time, but I'm going to give you a couple of suggestions. You know, Lutherans get a little cringy 
when you say, tell people about your faith. We're kind of doers, right, instead of speakers. What can we do? A couple of examples. You know, have anybody, has anybody ever heard a story from someone who is having a hard time in their life? Come on, I mean, really. Do you know what you can say to a person like that? How can I pray for you? How can I pray for you? What does that say? It says that you care about them, that you worship a God who cares about them, and that you're intersecting your faith with theirs right now. You're offering your faith to them. And if you want to get really bold, really bold, pray for them right then and there. And you're all staring at me blankly on that part. I'm going to tell you a quick story. You know all good Christians uh, in, in normal times after church go to Bob Evans, right? And they back their, they back their cars into the spaces. Well, my wife, Kathy, uh, she knows I tell this story, by the way. We went, and guess what I was dressed like? And I had my wife and two little kids with me. And we're sitting at a table, and four women, about four tables away, were staring, looking at me like this, clearly wondering, what's that priest doing with that woman? <laughs> Now, Kathy is delightfully bold, if you have not met her. And so she grabbed me by my shirt and planted the biggest kiss you ever saw right on my eyes. Which then prompted one of the women to come over. And she said this, she said, Father, where is your parish? And I said, I'm a Lutheran pastor. And she said, oh, thank God. <laughs> It was a table of four nuns. <laughs> True story. But here's the point of it. She said, I don't care if you're a Lutheran or if you're a Catholic. I don't care. I've just been diagnosed with cancer. Would you pray for me? Okay. So I had a choice. I could have said, yes, I'll pray for you, and kept eating my biscuits and gravy. But I felt inside that I was being asked to do more. And so I said, get your friends. And we went outside, and we stood outside of Bob Evans on Olentangy River Road, stood in a circle holding hands, and we prayed for her. Not a, there was not a dry eye there. And she said, you Lutherans can pray. <laughs> and I said, there's a lot about us you don't know. But the point is this. It doesn't take much to pray for someone. It really doesn't. All it takes is a, a, some words from the heart to a God who loves us and loves the person you're praying for. That's all it takes. And it can plant a seed in someone that may not exist. One other thing I'm going to offer you. Have you ever really thought about why you get up and go to church? I mean, seriously. You don't have to. If you can tell someone why you go to church, you have started to tell your faith to them. I was talking to a guy in his mid-90s over in the western part of the state. Church was dying. He went door to door. How do you think that worked when he went door to door? They all thought he was a Jehovah's Witness. So he decided, I'm going to tell somebody why I go to church. And he was talking to this guy, and he said, look, he said, I, go to, he said, I, I don't know what you do. He said, but I go to church because I feel, I feel a love that I don't experience anywhere else. I feel part of something bigger than me. And you know what? That guy in his mid-twenties, that guy showed up. If you can tell someone why you are a member of this congregation and why you get up on a Sunday, the next step will be, will you come with me? We'd love to have you. Lutherans aren't good at that. You know that, right? The data shows that the average Lutheran, this is not a lie, invites a person to church once every 22 years. And we wonder why the denomination is getting smaller. Invite someone to church, but please, for the, for the sake of the gospel and for the love of God, be here if they come. 
and show them how the book works. You know what? I, I was invited to church. Before I did this, I was a, I was a lawyer for a long time. And a, a woman in my office said, where are you going to church? I was a, a lapsed Methodist. I said, nowhere. Turns out she was an ELCA Lutheran, and look what happened. Seriously, look what happened. You don't know what God will do with an invitation. You, know, you don't know. I'm telling you this because you are installing, we are installing today, your new pastor. And he is not just eye candy to stand up front in a row on Sunday to make us feel better. His role is to help equip us, all of us, to be able to know the gospel, to experience God's forgiveness, and to share it. To share it. To share what Paul says are immeasurable riches of God's grace. That means it doesn't run out, folks. God's grace never runs out. Pour it out through us. So we're celebrating a ministry partnership today. That's what we're doing. And I pray, I pray, Pastor Scott, that, that God blesses you in this call. And I pray for Pastor Bonnie, but for different reasons. <laughs> Just kidding. And I pray, and I pray for, for this congregation, because this ministry partnership, God's going to use it to change lives. It will. God will, use, God will use this to change lives. We don't know how yet, but it happens. And my, my prayer for today is that the gospel, which is a good news that I think most people take for granted, has a lot of people around us that hasn't reached yet. I don't think there's any better calling than that. Amen. So I invite now Pastor Scott. Having been authorized by the church to install Scott Christopher Nellis, our co-worker in the gospel as associate pastor, of All Saints Lutheran Church Worthington, I now ask for certification of this call. Beautiful document if you haven't seen it. Saints Lutheran Church, after prayerful deliberations, have called Scott Christopher Nellis to be pastor. I present him for installation. Thank you. A reading from John's Gospel. Jesus said, Peace be with you as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. A reading from 1 Timothy. Set the believers an example in speech and conduct and love and faith in purity. Till I come, attend to the public reading of scripture, to preaching, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift that you have, which was given to you by prophetic utterance when the council of elders laid their hands upon you. Practice these duties, devote yourselves to them, so that all may see your progress. Take heed to yourself and to your teaching. Hold to that, 
for by doing so you will save both yourself and your hearers. Pastor Nellis, in the presence of this congregation, will you commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility in the confidence that it comes from God through the call of the church? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and the confessions of the Lutheran Church? Will you carry out this ministry in harmony with the constitutions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures? Will you love, serve, and pray for God's people? Will you nourish them with the Word and the Holy Sacraments, leading them by your own example in the use of the means of grace in faithful service and in holy living? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you give faithful witness to the world that God's love may be known in all that you do? I will, and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and the compassion to perform them. Amen. Would you please rise as you are able? And you, people of God, will you receive this messenger of Jesus Christ, sent by God to serve God's people with the gospel of hope and salvation? Will you regard him as a servant of Christ and as a steward of the mysteries of God? Will you pray for him, help and honor him for his work's sake, and in all things strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ. Scott Christopher Nellis, the office of pastor of All Saints Lutheran Church is now committed to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good so that you may do God's will, working in you that which is pleasing in God's sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. You have been called to be among us, to baptize, to teach, and to forgive sins. You have been called to be among us, to proclaim the good news. You have been called to be among us, to reside at the Lord's Supper. People of God, I have the privilege of presenting to you Scott Christopher Nellis, your new associate pastor. Let us welcome him in the name of Christ.
And as you speak A hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath the planets form The stars were made to worship so will I can see your heart in everything you would make. Every burning star, a single fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise. Speak in vain, no syllable empty or For once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, Catch your breath, evolving in pursuit of what you said. If it all reveals your nature, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you say, every painted sky. Canvas of your grace. If creation still obeys you, so will I. The stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow and So will I. If everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all our praise still fall shy Then we'll sing again a hundred billion times God of salvation You chase down my heart through all of my failures Light of the world abandoned in darkness to die. And as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear. Where you lost your life, so I could find it here. In a work of art called love If you gladly chose surrender So will I I can see your heart In a billion different ways Every precious one A child you died to save If you gave them so
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For all members of your church in their vocations and ministries, that we may serve you with true and godly lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all bishops and pastors, especially for Elizabeth Eaton, our presiding bishop, for Dr. Suzanne Darcy Dillahunt, our bishop, and for pastors of our sister congregations, that they may be filled with your love, may hunger for the truth, and may thirst after righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Pastor Scott Nellis, chosen to be pastor of this church, that he may faithfully fulfill the duties of this ministry, build up your church, and glorify your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in Scott, that he may be sustained and encouraged to persevere to the end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Mary, Lydia, and Adeline, for all Scott's family and loved ones who give support that they may be adorned with all Christian virtues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who fear God and believe in Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you are one, Lord and Father of us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who do not yet believe and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, for all who have died in the communion of your church, that they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will be partaking of Holy Communion today, and I'll invite you in a few moments uh, in the bulletin, you can see the capitalized words, the body of Christ given for you. At that point, you will pull your mass down, and you'll be able to consume the wafer, and then the blood of Christ shed for you, you'll take um, the juice. And if you haven't used these individual communion kits yet, um, you kind of have a top layer that you peel back for the wafer, and then a second tab that you'll pull back for the juice. This is the table of Holy Communion. It is a table not of the church, but of God. So know that you're invited to this sacrament. Those who have much faith and those who have little. Those who have tried to follow and those who have failed. Come, not because the church invites you, but because Christ invites you to be known and fed here. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. The body of Christ given for all of you.
And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me, the blood of Christ shed for you. Loving God, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I wanted to say that I wrote this song back in February, right after you all called um, Scott as your associate pastor. It was a very exciting and humbling time, and so I want to share that with you today. This grace has the power. 
before uh, I give the blessing and dismissal, I want to say, you know, this day is not really about me. It's about all of us, right? Without you, the church wouldn't be. We wouldn't exist. Without all the people behind me, the service wouldn't have been beautiful. Um, certainly wouldn't have been fun if you had someone yapping at you for 45 minutes. So um, to thank all of you for attending, the musicians, um, this is truly um, a special community and I'm, I'm honored to, to be a part of it now. We also, um, this is a Sunday school kickoff day. So again, uh, not all about us up here, but about the youth. And we have a graders truck on site, so you'll be able to uh, have a little bit of pre-dessert dinner, I guess you would say. And so take advantage of that. We have Sunday school kits that uh, youth can take home. Um, they have youth group meeting tonight, so a lot of stuff happening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for attending. Thank you uh, for taking my phone calls when I've called you for making uh, meals and delivering them to my family and I, for the support and love that you've shown to us. Thank you. May the love of God find you wherever you are. May the grace of Jesus Christ fill you and the unity of the Holy Spirit compel you to love others. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Go in peace. Pursue the love of God. Thanks be to God.